so good morning my dear students uh, we are entering into an arena of metabolism that is the third part of admi which is also known as biotransformation now as we mentioned the term elimination before by the term elimination actually we mean this biotransformation and excretion so ultimately it's a elimination of the drugs from the body why is it required it is required so that the cumulative effect of drugs should cause any kind of toxicity or harmful effects on your body organs so what are the organs which are responsible for elimination of the drugs which also means both metabolism and excretion the one uh, which is very commonly responsible for biotransformation is liver the second one is kidney the third one is lungs and others like mother's milk sweat saliva and the other things so when we talk about metabolism or biotransformation we mean chemical alteration of the drug in the body it is needed to render non polar that means lipid soluble compounds to polar compounds that is lipid insoluble compounds why because these things will become polar so that it can be easily excreted via urine and it is not going to be reabsorbed in the renal tubules in the absence of metabolism body will not be able to get rid of lipophilic substances and they will become very long acting most of the hydrophilic drugs like streptomycin which is an antibiotic neostigmine pancurenium they are little biotransformed and are largely excreted unchanged so water soluble drugs are excreted via unchanged mechanism they did not have to undergo this kind of biotransformation reaction and did not have to be converted from a non polar or lipid soluble compound to a water soluble compound and mechanisms which metabolize drugs essentially the foreign substances or xenobiotics are developed to protect the body from ingested toxins and other environmental chemicals now the major two reactions of metabolism are phase 1 and phase 2 reactions phase 1 reaction is also known as functionalization reaction on non synthetic reaction so these two are synonyms why is it called functionalization reaction because it has a functional group the group like hydroxyl group oh c double h group aldehyde group the acidic group amine group and these are generally exposed and the metabolite may be active or inactive whereas phase 2 reaction is also known as conjugation reaction or synthetic reaction and in an endogenous radical is conjugated to the drug metabolite and is mostly become inactive form except few drugs where glucuronide conjugation of morphine and sulfate conjugate of minoxidil are they become active so these are exceptions otherwise mostly the metabolites are becoming inactive form and this certain drugs already have functional groups and are directly conjugated mostly the others undergo a phase 1 reaction at the beginning followed by a phase 2 reaction but there is an exception the exception occurs with one anti tubercular drug isoniazide where phase 2 reaction occurs first followed by the phase 1 reaction now what are the things which are going to happen during biotransformation reaction in bio transformation reaction 
in biotransformation reaction an inactive drug which is also known as a pro drug is converted to its active components so most of the drugs a very common example is levodopa which is converted to dopamine so this is required otherwise you will not get the beneficial action of the drug so that is a very relevant function of biotransformation or mechanism i mean uh, metabolism another aspect of this biotransformation is an active metabolite is produced from an active drug many drugs have been found to be partially converted to one or more active metabolite the effects observed are the subtotal of that due to the parent drug and active metabolite very common example again is phenytoin which is converted to phosphenytoin which is an active metabolite of phenytoin but most importantly the active drug is converted to an inactive drug just by listening this one may uh, think that what will happen if an active drug is uh, converted to an inactive drug and how will we of active drug is over if it is going to be stored or accumulated in your body it will cause many toxic effects or harmful effects so few drugs are becoming inactive in such a new conversion in the body so this kind of thing this kind of inactivation uh these are active metabolites they are uh, becoming inactive and examples are paracetamol lignofen ibuprofen furan sanitar propanolol so just to sum up three things actually happening during biotransformation reaction an inactive drug is converted to an active drug example is uh, levodopa which is converted to So I mean, uh, active drug that is dopamine, and such drug like levodopa is called the pro drug. The pro drug may offer certain advantages over the active form. They are more stable, having better bioavailability, lesser toxicity, and uh, desirable pharmacokinetic properties. Some pro drugs are. activated selectively at the site of action then the active metabolite may be produced from an active drug for example is phenytoin which is converted to phosphenytoin so in combination they will show their action and the last one is inactivation which we actually want to reduce toxicity of the drug and that is happening in case of most of the drugs and the examples are ibuprofen paracetamol lignofen furan sanitar propanolol most of the drugs so they are becoming uh, from liquid soluble to water soluble to drug now drug metabolism is carried out in our system and as we know as we have already classified there is a phase 1 reaction that is functionalization reaction and in that reaction the functional group is exposed uh, whatever may be the group the hydroxyl group or the uh, acyl group the aldehyde group and the second group the phase 3 is the conjugation reaction where the radical is conjugated to the drug the metabolite is mostly inactive and except few drugs like glucuronide conjugate of morphine and sulfate conjugate of minoxidil the these things are uh, becoming inactive in these two exceptions the metabolite is becoming active mostly the phase 1 reaction is occurring first followed by the phase 2 reaction but the exceptions is happening with uh, anti tubercular drug that is isoniazide where type 2 reactions followed by the type 1 reaction now let us come to the uh, five where the uh, kind of specifically the phase 1 reaction is happening there are different enzyme system uh, i mean 
those are existing in our body, this is called microsomal enzyme system. And there are some systems which are definitely known as non-microsomal enzyme systems. They have their own characteristics. Now, microsome is not a normal cell organism. Now, when the uh, cell is undergoing repetitional centrifugation procedure, the mitochondria, uh, uh, that is the endoplasmic reticulum, is converted to a small cell organelle that is called microsome. And an entire family, it contains thousands of enzymes, are present within that. And that is called cytochrome P450 system. The oxidation, conjugation, um, the reduction between the phase 1, phase 2, all kinds of reactions are happening. Mostly the phase 1 reactions are oxidation, reduction and hydrolysis. Rest of the other reactions like uh, the glucuronidation, sulfation, acetylation, methylation, these are all phase 2 reactions. So, cytochrome P450 mediated reactions are these. So, the drug, the phase 1 reaction undergoing acquisition or inactivation, and the phase 2 example is glucuronidation, where you will see the conjugation of the product. And it is happening in the cytochrome P450 system. Now, what is cytochrome P450 system? That we have to dis discuss in the next slide. Cytochrome P450 is basically the strip. It is the protein. I mean, it's a kind of hemoprotein. And P stands for pigment. Whereas 450 is the nanometer of light which is which absorbs absorbs the light more in its so this is the way the cytochrome P450 is acting in our body. So the drug is a strip, the drug is being uh, added over there, then the, the, the serous form is there, and then the oxygenation is happening, oxidation is happening, oxygen is added to this, followed by the removal of this water, and then the drug and the hydroxyl group is reduced, and then the drug is uh, being added over here in the cytochrome P450. In this way, in this cycle, is happening inside your body. And if you have to summarize these things with words, then you have to look at this. NADPH is one of the most important things, which is uh, acting with drugs and the hydrogen ion. Carbon monoxide binds to the reduced. Uh, form that is the team and it absorbs that 450 nanometer of light it is that is uh, I mean there in the nomenclature the family in the, in the name of this cytochrome P450 cytochrome P450 bone oxygenase enzyme family is the major catalyst of the drug endogenous compound oxidations in liver kidney GI tract skin lung is happening there Oxidative reactions require the strip thin protein, the reductase, NADPH, then the molecular oxygen, and oxidized choline. Whereas strips are in smooth endoplasmic reticulum, in close association with NADPH, CYP, reductase in 10 is to 1 ratio. The reductase serves as an electron source for the So this is one example where you can see the uh, examples of phase 1 and phase 2 biotransformation reaction phenacetin which is the pioneer of paracetamol which 
was basically obsolete due to its renal toxicity, converted via phase 1 reaction to paracetamol and then via the process of glucuronidation reaction, it will form a glucuronide acid conjugate and eliminated from our body. And paracetamol is not a toxic drug in that sense, though it has some kind of uh, hepatotoxicity, but that is a different issue. Now, here you will see whenever you, you will read this chapter of biotransformation, you will see that CYP1A1, CYP2A6, CYP2B6, CYP2D6, CYP3A4, all these terms. So, what do you mean by this term? CYP is the hemoprotein, as I mentioned, P stands for the pigment, and 450 is the nanometer of light, uh, which is basically absorbing the maximum amount of light uh, by the enzyme now uh, in presence of carbon monoxide now one a one if suppose i am taking it as not the one a one the commonest one let, let us take the commonest one c three a four which is uh, written at the at the end uh, here here you see that taking this one. Now, 3 stands for family, A stands for subfamily and 4 stands for isoforms. What do you mean by family? Family means at least 50 percent similarity in the amino acid sequence of the enzymes. So, those are belonging to the same family. Out of this 50 percent, if uh, more than I mean, uh, 50 percent is, is 55 percent to 60 percent are having similarity in their most similarity in their amino acid sequence, then they are called they belong to the same subfamily. So, A belongs to that subfamily, and 4 stands for the isoforms. That means if the amino acid sequence is basically almost 70 percent uh, showing 70 percent similarity in their amino acid sequence. So, that is the logic behind uh, giving the nomenclature like this CYP3A1, CYP3A4, CYP2D6 and they are responsible for both enzyme, I mean drug metabolism which can be um, ultimately classified into two ways. One is called uh, enzyme induction, another one is uh, called enzyme inhibition. So, we will come to the part of enzyme induction and inhibition uh, later. So, what are the factors which are influencing activity of this CYP enzyme? Because these are all microsomal enzymes. Uh, the nutrition, um, the smoking obviously have adverse effect, alcohol similarly adverse effect, I mean it is suppressing uh, the action of CYP enzyme the drugs, they have variable effect, the environment as well as genetic polymorphism. So, all these will play a key role in dra uh, the drug uh, metabolism or biotransformation. There are some enzymes at the very beginning I have shown, those are belonging to non-microsomal enzymes the very initial slide I have shown you that the microsomal enzymes and the non-microsomal enzymes. So, there is particular one called non-microsomal enzymes and they are also hepatic enzymes and they are responsible for acetylation, sulfation, um, hydrolysis, all these kind of things, mostly the phase 2 reactions. Now, these non-microsomal enzymes like xanthine oxidase, they have a special property. These are present in the cytoplasm and mitochondria of hepatic cells as well as, as in the other tissues including plasma. The esterase like pseudocholinesterase, amidase, some flavoprotein oxidase uh, like xanthine oxidase, these are showing different types of reactions some oxidations and reductions, many hydrolytic reactions, all conjugations except glucuronidation are showing 
uh, I mean they are dependent on the non microbial enzyme. Both these enzymes are deficient in the newborn that means of both microsomal and non microsomal enzymes, especially in the premature baby, making them more susceptible to many drugs like chloramphenicol, opioids that means the morphine and this deficit is made up in the first few months more quickly in case of oxidation and other phase 1 reaction. If you compare it with uh, the case of glucuronidation or other conjugation reaction. The amount and the kind of drug metabolizing enzymes is controlled genetically and is also altered by diet environmental factors. So, genetic polymorphism is usually affecting this non microsomal biotransformation reaction or non microsomal uh, metabolism. One such example is deficiency of pseudocholinesterase, which is the deficiency of which will lead to uh, inability to metabolize acetylcholine and hence if some uh, muscle relaxants like acetylcholine is given like succinylcholine, it is not metabolized by this enzyme due to the deficiency, it is stored and ultimately may lead to diaphragmatic paralysis and apnea. So, mm, this is called pseudocholinesterase deficiency related apnea and that may th this kind of clinical conditions may happen due to alterations in the genetic profile of individuals and uh, usually in the developed country they used to measure the concentration of enzymes before giving drugs like succinylcholine. So, mostly we are talking about metabolism and how the enzymes are responsible for metabolizing different drugs, but there are some drugs which may be eliminated without undergoing metabolism and this refers to inactivation of the drug in the body fluids by spontaneous molecular rearrangement without the agency of any enzyme. The example is atracurium which is also an muscle relaxant and this phenomenon is known as Hoffman elimination. So, let us go back to the later slides. We see that how the enzyme induction and enzyme inhibition will affect uh, different clinical situation. So, this is the question which you may read while uh, listening my presentation. So, there are uh, certain drugs which will induce the number of enzymes, the microsomal enzymes and how will they in I mean uh, do these things? They will just increasing the synthesizing capacity of this enzymes as well as sometimes they will also increase the number of enzymes. So, increase the synthesis of microsomal enzyme uh, proteins especially cytochrome P450, uh, UGT and um, as a result the rate of metabolism of inducing uh, drug itself is increased. Mostly the anticonvulsants like phenytoin, carbamazepine, they are showing this kind of phenomenon. The other drugs are phenobarbitone which is the sedative hypnotic, rifampicin which is basically an antitubercular drug. They are classical microsomal enzyme inducer, but carbamazepine which may induce the action of itself by inducing the enzyme is also known as auto inducers. This is an exceptional phenomenon shown by carbamazepine and two of these enzyme inducers are never prescribed together because they will induce probably by the same enzyme induce each other's action and hence ultimately will get no beneficial effect. I am giving you one very common example how these things are relevant in clinical practice. Suppose a pregnant 
uh, I mean, a uh, new, uh, newly married lady who is probably uh, having tuberculosis is uh, taking oral contraceptive pills for a long time uh, and uh, just to prevent accidental pregnancy. Now, she is having tuberculosis or recently uh, infected with tuberculosis and started rifampicin. Uh, rifampicin is the first line drug given in case of tuberculosis. Now, rifampicin is an enzyme inducer and it is inducing the enzyme cytochrome P3A4. Now, the OCP or oral contraceptive pills are made up of estrogen and progesterone. Now, the, this OCP is basically metabolized by the same enzyme. Now, what happens? Once you prescribe this rifampicin, the enzymes will be induced, they will be synthesized more and they will start it working quicker and they will start it metabolizing the estrogen and progesterone component of OCP more and in a quicker fashion. Hence, the protection which is given by the OCP for 24 hours is being altered and what will happen? It will may lead to accidental pregnancy. So, we have to tell your patient to stop OCP take rifampicin for the treatment of uh, this kind of uh, tuberculosis and take some other kinds of uh, protective method like the barrier method or other method so that clinically they remain safe. You just cannot take chance by increasing the concentration of estrogen and progesterone or concentration of OCP because this may cause different harmful effects like carcinoma of uh, um, endometrium, car carcinoma of breast. So, it is uh, not possible to increase the dose of oral contraceptive pills. There are uh, certain problems which may, I am sorry, there are certain problems which may uh, be happened, uh, I mean the there are some uses rather of this enzyme induction. One is called the congenital non-hemolytic jaundice and it is due to deficient glucuronidation of bilirubin and there is one drug that is enzyme induced uh, phenobarbitone. It hastens clearance of jaundice because of its enzyme inducing property. Cushing syndrome where phenytoin may reduce the manifestation by enhancing degradation of adrenal steroids which are produced in excess of amounts. The liver disease, the chronic poisonings which by faster mechanism of the accumulated uh, these poisonous substances may lead to this kind of phenomenon. What are the consequences of microsomal enzyme induction? It may decrease intensity and duration of action of drugs that are inactivated by metabolism failure of contraception as I mentioned with oral contraceptives, loss of anti-HIV action of nevirapine like drug due to rifampicin co-administration, increased intensity of action of drugs that are activated by metabolism like acute paracetamol toxicity is due to one of its metabolites that is called N-acetyl paraquininoamine that is a toxicity occurs at lower doses in patients receiving enzyme induces. Tolerance, if the drug induces its own metabolism, the auto induction happens that is with carbamazepine and usually uh, the dose is to be doubled in after two weeks but that is that may lead to our another kind of toxicity. Some endogenous substances, steroids, bilirubin are also metabolized faster. Precipitation of acute intermittent porphyria. This the uh, enzyme induction increases porphyrin synthesis and by depressing delta amino levulinic acid synthesis. Interference with chronic toxicity testing in animals. Drugs whose metabolism is significantly affected by enzyme inductions are phenytoin, carbamazepine, antidepressants. Now during this time period, while I am discussing all these matters, you may have seen this question 
and the question says whether you can uh, I mean take this grapefruit juice um, and the last question is about the orange juice now these two are different things uh, the answer is you can take orange juice because it is not an enzyme inhibitor but uh, the grapefruit juice grapefruit is uh, is not grape it is a the kind of fruit it is known as grapefruit and uh, it is not probably available in india and that is basically an enzyme inhibitor now what it will do it will increase the concentration of a drug in your plasma why because it's an enzyme inhibitor and the same enzyme is responsible for the metabolism of another drug in the next slide i will show you a curve where you see that a person is taking one antihypertensive drug that means a drug used in high blood pressure and that is name is felodipine say amlodipine is a similar kind of drug and with that they have prescribed this grapefruit juice now when they have given it with juice you see how long and how how the peak is being maintained uh, at the very upper level whether in absence of this grapefruit juice it is coming down and it is actually eliminated from your body so this type of enzyme inhibition may lead to toxicity this kind of phenomenon is also seen with some drugs antifungal drugs like ketoconazole fluconazole so these are all enzyme inhibitors So human drug metabolizing uh, this cytochrome P450 system located in extrahepatic tissues are 2E1 which are in the lung, uh, 2F1, 2J2 they have not much of significance, 3A you can remember it because it is present in the GI tract, 4B1 and 4A11 is also not having that much of significance uh, at least in undergraduate teaching. So chemically diverse and small molecules are converted generally to the polar compounds and to summarize the reactions which are occur are aliphatic hydroxylations, dealkylation, oxidation, deamination, dehalogenation. So for each one of them at least you have to remember one reaction and reaction should be remembered in not in terms of uh, chemical reactions but just as oxidation one example hydrolysis one example like for hydrolysis is a cleavage of drug molecule by taking up a molecule of water so ester plus water in presence of esters will give you acid and alcohol so likewise I mean you have to remember reduction where the reaction is the converse of oxidation and involves cytochrome p450 enzymes working in the opposite direction we have to remember the name of the drug which is undergoing this like chloramphenicol or warfarin or halothane similarly in case of oxidation you have to remember uh, the very common examples like uh, the uh, oxidation of uh, theophylline the ibuprofens the barbiturates these are oxidized in the way by cytochrome p450 system whereas in case of phase 2 reactions you have to remember glucuronidation reaction out of that you have to remember the morphine glucuronidation reaction and minoxidin sulfate because these two are ultimately becoming active metabolite so these two are exceptions otherwise most of the things in case of paracetamol i have shown you they are becoming non-toxic components and excreted by urine in acetylation which is very important this reaction uh, is uh, multiple genes are controlling this in acetyl transferase the rate of acetylation shows genetic polymorphism and one such drug which is uh, very important in this regard is isoniazide where phase 2 reaction is shown before phase 1 reaction methylation reaction that is the amines phenols can be methylated by 
methyl transferase so you just have to remember the name of methionine and cysteine acting as methyl donors in case of adrenaline histamine nicotinic acid sulfate conjugation the phenolic compound the steroids are sulfated by sulfo transferase and the examples are chloramphenicol the glycine conjugation which is a very common example of for the salicylates and the nicotinic acids whereas the glutathione conjugation this is carried out by glutathione ace transferase forming a mercaptopurate it is normally a minor pathway however it serves to inactivate highly reactive quinone or epoxide intermediates formed during metabolism of certain drugs that means till the glutathione is there in your liver it will prevent you from the toxicity of those toxic active metabolite and the example is paracetamol when the large amount of such intermediates are formed to i mean in poisoning or after enzyme induction glutathione supply falls short toxic adducts are formed with tissue constituents and resulting in hepatic renal and other tissue damage in case of paracetamol poisoning it is not happening due to paracetamol mostly happening due to its active metabolite in acetyl para amino quinoamine so that one is basically depleting the storage of glutathione once the storage is uh, completely depleted or finished then it will start uh, having a direct toxicity on the liver cells and you will see the uh, a severe liver toxicity and uh, to to kill a patient or uh, to commit suicide the people has to take more than 10 g of paracetamol in a day but uh, in spite of that people are not sure whether uh, it is definitely going to uh, prove beneficial for that one i mean for that particular cause because even after that uh, with the help of different treatments um, different gastric lavage wash out with the help of different dialysis and other methods uh, most of the people can be saved so it's better not to try this type of practice with paracetamol rather paracetamol should be used as a uh, suppressive drug which is uh, used to suppress body ache headache um, fever so that's going to be the best solution with uh, this kind of drugs so in with this uh, i will conclude my presentation on biotransformation and in my next presentation i will come up with the part called excretion that is the last part and once we complete excretion we will combine this these two parts this metabolism and excretion and we'll discuss elimination in details with half life thank you so much